joined by Michael Scully, who is our general manager here at the Mini CIE complex. That's the existing Nimruti Mini CIE and the new Western Dubai Mini CIE opening in 2008. So today, Michael, we just wanted to learn a couple of things for you. One of the things I suppose that you admire most about the Mini CIE complex and its team. I've always, I've always enjoyed the, the, the informality and the naturalness of, of working at the Mina Siyaki where many years ago we coined the phrase the, the Mina effect. And the Mina effect really is all about, it's a, it's a lifestyle, it's a relaxedness, it's an enjoy, enjoyment of working in a resort as opposed to a city, a city centre hotel. The informality and the relaxedness of it has not, we believe, taken away in, anything away from the actual the service or the quality of service. However, it's made it in a very relaxed format, which people have, have learned to, to, to expect from a resort property. In your time in the industry, have you had the opportunity to work for other hotel brands? Yes, and, and yeah, I've been in the industry for over 20 years now. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and in that time, I've worked for I've worked in three on three continents. I've worked in Africa. I worked at Sun City, which is at the time one of the leading hotels in the world from an innovation point of view. Yeah, you know, we had all the, the big rock stars there, and we had we had the Million Dollar Golf. It was the, the head of, of, of one of the, the most uh, outside of Vegas. It was the gambling resort in the world most of the time. Um, and really anything that was new in, in, in the world of, of, of hospitality, of, of fun, of entertainment was at Sun City. So that was where I really learned, I think my, those were my formative years of learning how, how to, 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 to create excitement and, and, and fun out of, out of bars and entertainment and, out of, and, and making, making places where people want to go. And I think if we're, we're, we're at the Brasti today. Which I was I was told the other day, funny enough, by by a consultancy who's doing a, a, a study into into bars and, and different concepts for one of the big operators here in Dubai, that they now consider um, Rusty to be one of the busiest bars in the world. So there we go. So you know, and, and a lot of this stems from that kind of excitement and and, and, and making a place somewhere where people want to go to. And I think Rusty certainly yeah, has proved itself. So yeah, that's where I started in, in Sun City in, in Southern Africa, and then I went to London. I worked okay. for four years in London for the for the Accor Group, okay. and again, Accor was one of the biggest uh, companies in, uh, in in the hospitality industry. And um, from there, I joined um, Holiday in the Crown Plaza Group to open the Crown Plaza here in Dubai. All right. Um, and then I left the hospitality industry as such to help the government to develop. What is Mina Siyaki then? It's included the marina and the clubhouse. We did all the World Powerboat Series uh, Championships. We did the World Sailing Championships. We did the World Jet Ski Championships. And in the meantime, while we were doing all these events, we also started building a hotel, which was obviously the plan when I joined. Yeah. So I've been part of the development of, of the Mina Siyaki project since then. So during that time, I believe, obviously had the opportunity to meet a lot of inspirational and innovative people. Is there anyone in particular, I suppose, that sticks in your mind and who you drew a lot of experiences with during your, your training? I think I've worked with many, many groups, and I think uh, more than individuals, it's, it's more the organisation and it's more what they, what they, what they, they give and, 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 and philosophy and style and what they allow you to do. I think what you've, got, what you've really got to look at is you've got to look at the, 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 the two types of management and the two types of people. You get the people who, who promote um, development, who promote ideas, and promote, promote selling and promote selling yourself in the organisation and, and developing business and such. And then those who are stifle, and, and I think you've got to really, you've got to separate them. And, and the ones who stifle are the ones who are really controlling, who are the controllers who, who are looking at every aspect of, of controlling. And I think, you know, um, yeah, the hotel industry and people in the hotel industry have got to be considered a bit like birds, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way to describe them. And, <laughs> and, you've got to, and you've got to fly, you know what I mean? And, and you've really got to be able to, 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 to open your wings and be able to and go somewhere and have innovation and ideas because the public do not want to go into and get stuck on a bird cage. You know, they want to be out in the open, they want to have something fresh, they want to have new ideas, they want new, new developments, they don't want it to be stale, they don't want it to be boring. 
And and certainly, I probably probably if, uh, if anyone sticks out, probably the first person I, I worked for was Saul Kirsten. And if you just look at the developments he's done around the world, which is in South Africa, I mean, there was a man who had serious vision and, and, and was not scared to experiment. He had the best entertainment in the world and he attracted the best entertainment. And that's certainly my style, and that's what, what, what I love. Like. And you obviously look to developing your birds here amongst the, the Minasiai group and giving them wings to fly. Well, I think so. I think what were your reasons that. initially for choosing the hospitality industry? It's not something probably you fell into Ooh, or...? Uh, yeah. It's just something which always appeals to my nature, and I think I think everything everything is about your nature. You know, I was actually down to go and study law at the University of Cape Town. Really? And about a month before going to to, to study, I turned around to my father and said, "Okay, I'm going to go and do the army, and then finish that, and then decide what I want to do." And I know that I I'm just not academically minded. I wouldn't have sat down and, and studied. And so I would have done a year and wasted a year. You know what I mean? And that's and I think we all know each other. We all know ourselves. And then that side of the last conference. So. Good choice. Can you tell me, I suppose, you've probably encountered a lot of funny experiences, whether it be in line of work or possibly what you've experienced yourself as a hotel guest. And is there any particular hotel experience that sticks out in your mind as being quite amusing and, and funny? There's so many of them. You know, I, I've had that experience with royalty. I worked at a hotel in Manchester, the Midland Hotel, which is one of the B hotels outside of London, or in respect to Dorchester, outside, outside of, of London. And um, I had to meet uh, Princess Anne there once. And uh, to cut a long story short, there's a little book that comes out when they, when they visit the town and the Lord Lieutenant gives us this, this book with that. And um, in it, it describes you know, that she was going to meet Michael Vincent Press Kelly. And um, I was very impressed when she said to me, she asked me how it was that I had five names. <laughs> and I duly responded that I said, I didn't know my parents, but she went to the, it was the hotel, the holiday in Crown Plaza Midland Hotel. <laughs> now, I felt such a fool at the time, and, and, and it's easy to make mistakes in blunders like that. But however, you, know, you, you learn these things, you try and forget them. For the young hoteliers that come in today, what, what would be your final word of advice for them? For people who are possibly considering the industry or in the industry and, and considering moving upwards? I think, look at you, I think you've got to look at this as, as probably being and developing into one of the biggest industries in the world. Certainly, depending on which countries you can go, it can be the number one industry in many uh, countries. Uh, some of the islands, it's the only industry. Um, and for worldwide, it is turning, <laughs> has been very big and it's turning into a phenomenal industry. So there are opportunities for this. I think what, you, what, what people have got to remember is that, that it's an industry where people want excitement, people want adventure, people want to be, be, be uh, led, they want, to, they want to be pampered, they want to be, uh, enjoy themselves. And you've got to appreciate that there are different people and different folks with different strokes. So you, you, you know, some people do want to buy at resorts, you know, everyone wants to get, get, get entertained to, to, to the help. And you know, go into it with a very open mind, be, be, be adventurous, be willing to experiment, be willing to, to, to give it to, to whoever it is an experience that they, they will be different from what they're going to have at home. You know, if people are going to go away and spend a lot of money, they don't want to do what they could do. Right? They want to be able to, to, to yeah, have something a little bit different. Look, look for innovate. Be, be adventurous. Be innovative. And, and be an inventor. Yeah, and, and I think every one of us should be an inventor. See what staff as well. They get very, very, uh, very, very, very uh, passionate. Yeah, passionate. And they also they can be proud. But they see that they've actually led the way before other hotels so. And um, I mean, I'll give one example. Is, is, is the restaurant Tang here. And we haven't mentioned that we've got and it's got the most innovative food in the world. It's, it's a molecular gastronomy, which is only about four or five restaurants in the world doing it. However, you can see it's now really starting to take, there's, there's a buzz around it, you know, and, and, and restaurants are starting to take little bits of it. And, 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 and you know, thank goodness chefs are starting to use it in their canopy menus. And we're just starting to see it coming out. However, we've been running it for two years, and we were the first in Dubai, we were the first in the Middle East, and we were one of the only four restaurants in the world to do it. That's, that's, that's the difference between being a leader and, and, and following. And as, as an inventor in the industry here at Minas yeah, where do you see yourself in, in 10 years' time? Hopefully still inventing. Um, you know, you, you never know, maybe I'll be able to take one of those investor inventions one day. But let's just see how, how it goes. Thank you for joining us today uh, with younghotelier.com and we look forward to coming back to visit you in your new Western Dubai. Thank you very much.